Hey guys, it's your girl Victoria back to you with another review of Married at First Sight season 14 episode 13 called Poppin' the Questions. So we get right into it. So we're just going to start off with these little video clips from some people. Jasmina saying she's feeling good about her marriage. Okay, whatever. Uh, Noi said it's been hard for her and Steve to communicate. Okay, but that's from your own doing at this point, Noi. Uh, Mark saying it's been a difficult week for him and Lindsay. What else is new, Mark? Up and down every episode. All right, so pretty much this episode is when each person that is still in the game, as opposed to Chris and Alyssa's ass and her lips, uh, are having one-on-one -on -one time with either Pastor Cal or Dr. Pepper. So for right now, we see Katina and Elijah on. They're going food shopping together. And Elijah is letting us know in the confessional that he needs to guide his wife, Katina, on how to grocery shop. Makes little jokes and stuff like, I don't even know if you know how to cook this and that. And Katina mentions them doing a cook-off. I don't want to eat nothing neither of you guys make, to be honest. So, I don't know. Katina talking about the only thing he know how to cook is breakfast. But Katina, you really don't know how to cook breakfast either. Because we saw them eggs a few weeks ago and it was a disaster. Um, they talk about, he asked her about making ribs. And I'm just like, the girl don't know how to make eggs. You, you sure? You, you trust her to, to make a whole full rack of ribs. And she's saying stuff about season. Like, listen, I'm not going, listen, I'm not her husband. Uh, by the same time, you guys talking about steps to making some, like, I don't, I don't know. Can we talk about taking the membrane off first of the, I'm just saying, cause, I, I, okay. Uh, that, that's them. Okay. We're going to move on to Mark and Lindsay. <laughs> uh, what else is new with them? Nothing. Okay. It's the same thing. Different episode. They have another argument about what, I don't know. You know, who cares? The same crap. Lizzie rah rahing about consistency and healthy communication. No, they were talking about consistency and having better communication. I think Mark was the one saying about healthy communication. It's the same thing. It's a back and forth. Lizzie's still upset about the night before. She crying. And Mark is apologizing, of course, as he always do. And, you know, Lindsay don't apologize because she says she takes accountability for everything. But, yes, Mark is the one who's always apologizing and saying, you know, trying to move forward as opposed to just being in the moment of arguing just to argue and be cruel like how Lindsay be doing. And not saying she's not valid in her feelings of certain things. But at the same time, Lindsay, you just, you make this situation that's like this level. You try to make it this level. And that, like, no. So... She gets fed up. She grabs a little purse and anything and leaves. I'm just like, all right, you could go leave. Please just don't come back with a wet ass dress like you did last week. Cause that just looked like, what the hell are you doing? Cause parts of it, it's not like, cause I said maybe she went into the pool or something, but like, how did, did part of the dress get in the pool? I don't even, I don't know. I don't know. But she leaves again. Bye, Lindsay. We're going to see you in a few minutes anyway. So this ain't nothing new. Y'all just going to come back and make up, right? All right, cool, whatever. So, we get to the sit-downs with the Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper, the experts. So we start off with Pastor Cal sitting down with Noi. Of course, the same old, same old noise is concerned with Steve's finances and wants to know uh, if he can get and hold down a job. Um, Pastor Cal is just like, okay, so why are we not talking to Steve about this and having the direct communication about that? She says she's scared too and nervous too. And I'm just like, girl, that's your husband. Um, you guys are not on the camera every minute of every day. Don't know why you can't just ask him behind closed doors and do what you need to do to figure things out. But she too scared to ask him. Whatever. Moving on to Steve, he talking with Dr. Pepper. I don't even think Pastor Cal told her any advice other than to talk to him, which is the most logical thing to do. I don't understand why still in 2022... We can't have communication, which is the thing lacking in a lot of people's relationships. And like I said plenty of times before, not just marriage. We got friendships, family relations. 
why can we not just have co simple communication? I don't know. That's too hard for people. I don't know. We move on to Steve talking with Dr. Pepper. And Steve's main issue, of course, is Noi posting negative stuff on uh, relationship quotes on social media. He didn't say that word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. And Dr. Pepper kind of comes to Noi's defense and says, excuse me, that it's because there's a fear. A fear of non-security from Steve. She didn't say that word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. And because of the fact that Steve doesn't have a job, you know, he needs to have a conversation with her to help her feel more secure in the relationship. Um, I feel like Noi's been saying that, but not saying it directly. I think, I think we discussed this when they sat down with Dr. Pepper. I mean, not Dr. Pepper, Dr. Viviana. Steve, I don't know why it's taking episode 13 for us to get to this point. I mean, we're going to get to that later on. But this is something that should have been, been discussed. Even if you didn't want to do numbers, you could have at least started having a conversation to the point where you do sit down with the numbers. But, I mean, Steve, I feel like you know what you're supposed to do. But I don't know why you're kind of beating around the bush of what you're supposed to do. Like, you don't know. Like, you can effectively communicate. Everybody's been commending you on Twitter saying, you know, you're doing a great job with communication and stuff. But, yeah, you can't figure out, like, oh, the finance has been a conversation since, like, day one. Maybe we should just sit down and have that conversation. But then again, you guys you could just be doing this for the camera. Just to have a storyline on this, this season. I don't know. But... We move on to Katina sitting with Pastor Cal. Of course, they talk about everything that's been going on in the marriage relationship. I just wanted to pinpoint that I've noticed that both Katina and Pastor Cal was wearing the same shade of blue. So I thought, I was, I thought that was cute, even though I don't, I doubt that was planned. But I just made notation of that because, you know, I, I, I see stuff in the background, even though it's not really. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, they talk about how Katina and Elijah Wan haven't been intimate, so to speak, as of yet that we know of. You know, they could be saying something else after the season is over, but whatever. And Katina's excuse for herself is she doesn't want to get, I believe she, because they bleeped out the word, but I believe she said dick. So she doesn't want to be dick dizzy. And I guess that's just a female version of pussy whipped. But... I mean, there is a female word people usually use, which is dickmatized. So, but I guess she wants to use dick dizzy. Okay, Katina, you want to make your own little saying. Okay, cool, whatever. And Pastor Kyle want to act like you don't know what the hell that means. Read between the lines. You're a doctor, okay? Context clues, doctor. Uh, Pastor Kyle. I said doctor. Pastor Kyle, come on, man. Co context clues, bro. Dick dizzy. You, you, you couldn't figure out what that meant? Oh, okay. But, um, so... With her and Elijah Wan, she's just concerned with how he handles certain situations. But they talked about it. They're moving forward from what she says. She didn't say that word for I'm just paraphrasing. And I don't feel like Pastor Kyle really offered any advice other than she needs to pinpoint where he's coming from and why he acts the way he acts. But we're not going to tell her, like, listen, what we're not going to do, you're not going to talk to me any type of way, like... I'm just a bitch out here, random Joe Schmo bitch out in these streets. Uh, no, I'm your wife, and you're going to talk to me with respect, as you should a wife. We, we're not going to say that, though. Just just try to figure out where he's coming from with that and what we're going to do with that information, other than let him know, listen, I'm your wife. And you want to express that so much to me when you see an uh, app that I don't even use on my phone. And, like, no. But... We get to Elijah Wong's ass talking to Dr. Pepper. And she asked him how things are going. So, of course, I feel like he gave a very textbook fake answer. Well, things are going well. You know how he, oh, yeah, you know, it's going great. You know, I'm just like, to you. Because she's doing everything under the sun, above the sun, and between the sun for you. And we haven't really seen you do nothing for at all. No. She's the one planning all the little days and stuff. You're not really doing nothing. The only thing you planned was for her to go and learn how to make shrimp. And that turned out to be a disaster. You made a girl cry at the end of the date. So, of course, it's going well for you because you're the one who's being, um, 
I don't know what the word is, but you're the one who's being spoiled and romanced. Whereas she is, I feel like the slave. So Dr. Pepper says she's been noticing that he talks down to his wife. He's looking kind of confused and he immediately gets offended. He disagrees. He's like, do I talk stern to her? Yes. Do I talk in a tone that might not be the best? Yes. But I do not talk down on my wife. And Dr. Pe Dr. Pepper explains a couple of things she's unheard that he says to his wife. That he says that she's behind him in maturity. Which could be the furthest from the case. Furthest from the case. Something else that he said, like two, three things she said that he doesn't say. So, of course, Elijah's already offended and defensive. So now he's getting booked with Dr. Pepper saying, well, somebody got something to say, they can say it to my face. And if Katina feels that way, then she needs to say no on decision day. And I'm just like, first off, why are you getting booked with Dr. Pepper? I'm surprised Dr. Pepper stays so calm, cool, collected. Uh... Knowing myself out in public, uh, would I have stayed calm, cool, collected? Probably, but at the same time, <laughs> I'm going to get really silent. That might be the calm before a storm. I don't know. No one's ever really tried me like that in public. That's because I don't try to be in people's business like that, but I know Dr. Pepper is an expert, so she got to say what she needs to say, and she going to let it, you know, she going to let it be known what you're doing wrong. Unless if you're a white woman who, who okay, we're going to get to that later. Um, so she really don't do nothing. She stay calm, cool, collected, goes to commercial for dramatic effect, comes back from commercial for dramatic effect. And Elijah one is saying he bothered and Dr. Pepper is making him look like the bad guy. But it's like, Elijah one, you are the bad guy. And Dr. Pepper asks about decision day and what he's going to say. And he's like, he's not going to answer that. But he would be sad if Katina said no on decision day. Elijah wants a jackass. Katina, girl, you gonna stay beside him? I mean, I. This is episode thirteen. What else is there to say? Uh, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. Noah and Steve, they sit down to talk about what happened with the little sit-ins with the experts. And uh, Noah telling saying the social media post wasn't about him. The social media post said, if you feel like you deserve better, you probably do. She said it wasn't about him. But sometimes in the relationship, she, sometimes she feel like that in the relationship. So it is about him. Like, what are you trying to say, Noy? You just contradicted yourself. You just told on yourself. The post wasn't about him, but you feel like that in the relationship. Why would you Why would you post it if that wasn't how you felt in that moment? Like, no, get, get out of my... Girl, bye. Okay, the door is right there. Please go. Because you lying to him. You lying to yourself. You're lying to America. We do not buy it. We are all annoyed by you. Noy, you are annoying. You put the annoy in annoying save the excuses because you're talking about he be making excuses you you make excuses and he's like that's her fault we know steve but you know that's your wife you gonna stick beside her um and Nora gets defensive talking about it's her social media she can do whatever she want and i'm like yeah but you acting like a little high schooler want to post everything on social media have we not established as a community that posting on social media about your relationship is probably not the best thing to do. How many times do you got posts and ads and shit saying, oh, social media is the downfall of relationships because everybody want to post shit and, you know, we don't need to know that. We don't. I mean, I'm going to watch it on TV because it's on TV. But at the same time, it's like, I, I mean, I'm not posting my business on social media. I'm not posting my relationship on there. Like I said, Facebook, you may get a picture or two a year about, you know, anniversary or whatever, but I'm not posting no relationship type of thing, nothing on Facebook. Like I said, I'm pretty, you know, when new, I, I don't put who I'm dating and stuff on uh, Facebook. The first time I put something about relationship on Facebook was when I got married and I've changed the status from single to married. So 
Like, okay, girl, whatever. Your Facebook, you can do it. Okay, you can. Okay, but uh, listen, it's on TV. It's for the TV show. He, he keeping it, trying to call him cool collector, but I'm sure he going to let you know, listen, next time you post something on social media, it's going to be, it's going to be an issue, like a bigger issue than this. Trying to stay cool for you and for us, for the team. Okay. All right, no, I keep, keep playing. Because sometimes men don't have time for games. And if you play too much games, they're going to be gone. Uh, <laughs> so, Steve's upset. Nori seems like she don't care. And Steve's asking what he did, what does he need to do in order to make the relationship better and make things better. And, of course, Nori goes into she needs to feel financially secure. And because of her past, she's not trying to go down that path of being pretty much not having the funds to do what she needs to do as a team as a marriage and you know eventually for kids we're gonna get to the kids in a second uh later on in the episode but she's unnerved that steve doesn't have a job and steve says okay he's willing and wanting to sit down with her make a plan and figure out what they need to do in regards to finances and the job and all that stuff and Nora says she hears him but she needs to see it first before she feels secure I'm just trying to figure out why is this happening just now. This should have been happening a month ago. For goodness sake, she done said she loved you in three days, Noi. Like, Noi said, you you loved him in three days. And you said you loved her in three weeks. Why is this? Why wasn't the fourth week, okay, since we established we loved each other and we probably going to stick it out. Can we, let's sit down and figure out how we going to make this work episode 13 what is that 16 days left until decision day almost two weeks you you six weeks in you better be six weeks in and we still haven't really discussed all right we're gonna move on to mark uh he said he feeling mentally drained but he goes and sits down with pastor cow talk about the marriage and whatnot and pastor cow's advice to mark is he needs to ask Lindsay, why does she get so angry and mean when they argue? And he asks his Mark, is that how your parents used to argue? And if, the, if she, if Lindsay reminds Mark of his mother, Mark seems dumbstruck, like, wow, I didn't think about it like that before. Then Pastor Cal asks him, do you, are you afraid of becoming your father? Mark is stunned again. He's like, no one's ever asked me that before. He's getting teary-eyed. I'm just like, is this a therapy session? Like, I know they they sitting down to talk about what's going on and they give advice and stuff, but this feels like a legit therapy session between Mark and Pastor Cal. And Mark's just, you know, getting teary-eyed, getting a little emotional. And I think Mark kind of confirms that he's afraid of being his father because his father never really did anything. His mom always said what she wanted to say to the dad and the dad never, you know, sometimes he doesn't even respond. He just lets the mom talk to him any type of way, all crazy. So Mark says he just wants him and Lindsay's communication to be healthy. He goes, okay, you want that Mark? And I believe you do, but at the same time, you can't let her run all over you like your mother did your father. Um, so you gonna have to figure out how to put your foot down and let her know Listen, I want to make this work, but we we not doing this raw raw stuff at all. But then you know what Lindsay's asked. I mean, good luck with that. Okay, we're gonna move on <laughs> to Dr. Pepper sitting with Lindsay again. Not really feels kind of low key another therapy session, but I feel like Dr. Pepper was just trying to coach Lindsay on how to speak better. With you know, it's not it's not about what you say about it's about how you say it. And I always tell people that all the time. I tell my husband that all the time. It's not about what you say; it's about how you say it. So I guess Dr. Pepper was coaching Lindsay, okay, to express her feelings, but in a better way that's not so mean, cruel, with so much anger and aggression and cruelty. So Lindsay's talking about she's sad all the time, and her anger is not for you know, her anger comes from sadness. And I'm looking, I'm like, um, Lindsay, are we depressed? This That sounds like you, you might be depressed. And I'm not saying that to be mean or to joke, 
But I'm like, if this is the way you're feeling, Lindsay, you do not need to be on the show. You do not need to be married. You do not need to be in a relationship. You need to figure out. You should have went to figure out your feelings and emotions first before you came on the show. And the experts say they put everybody through counseling and they evaluate them or something. But these people need to go to therapy. I know they be trying to crank out these seasons left and right. But um, can we get like at least one hour therapy session with each person? Then the therapist, the actual therapist can figure out. Not no so uh, sex therapist and pastor. Like no, like a licensed, professional, certified therapist. Sit with them with an hour to figure out are they mentally able to go through a journey like this one. Um, so, Lindsay, I mean, the best of luck to you, but you really probably need to seek therapy. And that's, like, not to be funny. Like, you need counseling, especially you're being your mother. I feel like you're becoming your mother. No, not becoming. You probably are your mother. And your your dad and your brother try to warn us on episode one. They try to warn us. And I knew she was raw, raw with the talking and stuff. But when we get into this point, this part you talking with Dr. Uh, Pepper, you, you, you need a little help. And that's not even being funny. Like, you need to talk to someone. So we move on with uh, Michael and Jasmina. Michael sits down with Pastor Cal. Not much to take from uh, this scene with them. <laughs> Michael says he's not intimate. They, they're not intimate with nothing. He doesn't really try because... He doesn't want to force anything, pretty much. That's what I took from what he was trying to say. He didn't say that word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, Pastor Cal was like, listen, just like you said, you felt like you did it out of obligation, being intimate, and eventually it became to the point where you wanted to do it. So I guess there was a point in time Jasmina was uh, kissing him and stuff because she felt like she was obligated as a wife to do it. And he said he didn't want her to feel like she was obligated to so she could stop. So she stopped, and it really hasn't picked up back since then. Pascal was like, you should have never done that. You stupid. You dumb. Stupid. Because just like you was able to start liking it, if you would have allowed her to continue doing it, eventually she would have liked it too. So I guess he might work on that. We'll see how that goes. Jasmina sits with Dr. Pepper, and Jasmina still finds Michael as a stranger to her, so she's... Still wants to know more of Michael. Still wants to know about his past and want him to be more vulnerable with her. Like, I don't know how much more vulnerable a homeboy could get with her. But, Jasmina, what about you being vulnerable with him? And if you are, we haven't seen it on camera. So, blame the producers for that. And she says she's a very sexual person. But uh, she don't feel anything when Michael be touching her. And I'm just like, sexual person with who? Yourself? Okay, if you sexual with yourself, then okay, kudos to you, all the, you know, whatever, all the women empowerment to you. But with who? Because all your relationships relationships been uh, long distance. So unless you have a one-night stands with men and stuff, uh, being very sexual person must be with yourself. Because uh, I don't see how that's, how that is happening when you don't even have a relationship with someone in the same city as you. Face to face. Other than Michael at this point. Okay. And um, Dr. Pepper just tells her to be in a moment. This episode was uh, a little lackluster, you know, uh, except for like maybe the last five, ten minutes. What they, what they've been doing the past how many seasons? But OK, we're going to move on to Mark and Lindsay. They sit down and talk about how I went with talking with the experts and at this moment, we see some interesting chicken on the table that Lindsay's cutting up. She's making it seem like it's the best thing since sliced bread. Margaret looking at it like it's foreign chicken. I'm looking at it like it's foreign chicken. America's probably looking at it like it's foreign chicken. What is this yellow thing on the chicken? Is it cooked? Salmonella looking, waiting to happen. Mark takes a bite, though. I mean, she cut into it. It seems like it might be cooked the way she cut into it. You heard the, the noise of it all. But, um... All right, I just wanted to make notice of the chicken because I'm like, I don't know. It looked kind of uh, questionable, but okay, whatever. And they talk about, like I said, what they discuss with the experts. Mark gets emotional. 
And they both explain their sides and their reasonings for the way they are and how they could better move forward. Mark is just like, you know, I wouldn't be here if you wasn't a good person. He didn't say that word for it. I'm just paraphrasing. But he said he ain't going nowhere. And he needs for her to be there for him. Not saying as his mother, but motherly when his mother and Nana passes away. Oh, sorry. When they're no longer here on this earth. Lindsay seems like she's happy to hear that and they hug and make up. But I'm just like, motherly. You need her to be there for you. Motherly. Not wifely, Mark? Not, not, not as your wife? As your partner? Your best friend type of thing? Motherly? That's concerning to me. Define motherly. I would need to, like, see, this is what... I, I would need to know what you mean by that. Because I'm not, I'm not going to be nobody's mother but the kids that I birth from my own womb. Now, there's one thing if, like, you know, not, I'm not going to be mother, a mother to my husband. Just, case, just in case if that came off wrong, like, oh, I'm not going to be. Listen, I'm, I mean, like, husband-wise, like, we are partners. Motherly, no, 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 no. That's, that, that's, that's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. But we're going to move on to Michael and Jasmina. They discuss what they had talked with, with the experts. And she says she has feelings and knows that the physical will follow. But she feels like she doesn't know Michael. And I guess they're still trying to figure that out. <sighs> it's been six weeks, y'all. Like, why... <laughs> You could have been talked and figured it out. I, st I guess you guys still have two more weeks left, but at this point in time, like, if you want to make it work, you would make it work already. Like, for goodness sakes, you guys are not on camera 24-7. You guys can have intimate conversations off camera in the bed since you guys are still, like, sleeping in the same, same bed, right, for, for what we know or what we assume. So why are we not having the conversations to get to know each other off camera? Do you guys just go to sleep? Whatever. All right, we're going to move on to Steve and Noy. They sit down to talk about the finances. Steve got his whole laptop up. And they discuss, you know, having separate bank accounts and having a joint bank, bank account for the finances, for the bills and whatnot. Noy says she nervous. Why are we nervous, Noy? You guys could have done this off camera, but whatever. You're doing this on camera for some TV time, whatever. And Steve is trying to explain to her, okay, he can get a job but maybe not the regular nine to five route. Noi looking like she's not liking what she's hearing, but she's not expressing. Noi, I'm gonna need you to express. If you don't like something, you need to let it be known. Cause like my husband tells me all the time, I'm not a mind reader. So Steve not no mind reader. He not know what's going through your head. I mean, we could get context clues based off of your facial expressions. But at the same time, this is TV. So the producers just could be making it putting inserting a facial expression that you make and making it seem like you're reacting to what Steve is saying in that moment but it could just be construed the way producers be putting it in together shows and whatnot but she looks like she's unpleased with what he's saying okay if you're unpleased can we talk about it talk about it with your husband discuss what you guys need to do he even talks about when you have kids maybe you need to take time off and I'm just like take time take time off First off, how long? Second off, who who paying the bills? Are you paying the bills, Steve? If, if Noi takes time off before having kids, you, you paying the bills? And if you are, Steve, that means you got bills enough to pay for both yourself and her. Correct? I'm going to assume. And if that's the case, you have money. And if that's the case, Noi, what, what, what are we unnerved about? If the nigga is able to take care of you, if you want to take a break from working. Now I get it. He's probably a minimalist. And you know. He probably doesn't need to. Go on excursions. Of like. Nice restaurants. And all that stuff. But at the same time. If that's even an option. Which a lot of people. In America. Cannot do. Um. No way. I don't think we need to be too concerned. That's just my personal opinion. He talks about kids. You know, what does he, what does she see of wanting to have kids within like right now, like tomorrow, five years from now, whatever. She talking about 
she wants to have a kid within the next year. And um, I'm thinking to myself, as well as people from Twitter, you just said you didn't want to live together. But now you want to talk, but now you're talking about wanting to have a kid within the next year. Did you see his finances? And you was like, oh, he got money. Oh, he said I could take time off so we could have kids. So did you see something we didn't see? And second off, they talk about changing baby's diapers. And I don't know. I know they was kind of a little kiki and joking, but it seemed like she was trying to throw away, oh no, you could change the diapers. Or whoever sees the diaper first is going to change it. So, Nora, is, does that mean you're going to purposely not see the diaper needs to be changed first and wait for um, Steve's ass to come in and change the diaper? No, it's a two-way street. Just like he's not supposed to be taking care of your damn dog all by himself. He's he not going to be taking care of y'all kid by himself. She's like, oh, well, maybe you could get more acquainted since, you know, I'm carrying it for nine months. No, it, it seems like a little... You know, tit for tat. You you seem very immature, very petty. Like, no, it's a 50-50 thing, no way. You may have carried it for nine months, but he had to probably deal with you and your mood swings for nine months. Yo, but he's dealing with your mood swings now. And your petty childish ways of being like, it's my social media. I can put whatever I want on it. He's dealing with your immature ass. So, no, it's not, Okay. That's their relationship. Steve, you know, that's, that's your girl. That, that's your wife. You're going to do whatever. But, uh, no way, please. So, we move on to the group. They're going to do a group activity together. No way says she got a headache, so she's not going to be participating. So, Steve writes by himself. I was surprised to see Mark, Lindsay, Katina, and Elijah on writing together, carpooling to the activity event. I was surprised. I was like, oh, for real? Yeah, so y'all cool like that now to, to ride together? Okay, that's cool. So they, oh, before we get to the activity, because they play ball, volleyball and whatnot, but Pastor Cal and uh, Dr. Pepper are sitting behind scenes uh, in a room with the TV, see how their little activity is going. Now, is this a setup? Did they did the producers like, Elijah, well, let's talk about you and Dr. Pepper? Because I'm just like... Normally, you guys really wouldn't be doing this. So, you guys uh, concocted this scene to make it interesting for us because you knew this episode was a drag. Okay, so they play volleyball. Katina can't play for shit. She was such a good sport about it. Listen, I did a little chuckles here and there when I saw her trying to play volleyball. But, you know, at least she kept a great attitude. But I'm just like, girl, you should have been a, a cheerleader like Bao was last season, bro. I'm <laughs> But E for effort, Katina. E for effort, girl. Girl. All right. So after they play, they sit down and talk. I think it was um, Jasmina, Michael, Katina, and Elijah on one team. And then Lindsay, Mark, and Steve on, on the other team. But I don't know. But Steve, Lindsay, Mark won, I believe, from like 20. The score was like, what, 21 to 6? Something like that. I don't know. Who cares? So they sit down and talk about how things been and how they're talking with the experts. Everybody says stuff. I guess Lindsay and Mark said something. Lindsay was trying to deflect from what Pastor Kyle was saying. But I'm like, all right, nothing else is new here. She tried to lean over to Mark. He's looking like he want to lean all the way away from her. He's not trying to deal with her. And the experts noticed that. What I noticed, they, they noticed all those body language. What I noticed was everybody had, like, Gatorade for drinks. And Lindsay went and sat down with a damn beer. That's what I noticed. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Or is that an alcoholic beverage somewhere near close by to Lindsay, no matter if it's home or if they're out or in a group activity. Lindsay always drinking. But we get to Elijah Juan. Of course, he going bad talk about the pepper, saying that she didn't help him at all. The whole conversation was 90% a waste of his time. <laughs> you can see Dr. Pepper's body language. She she spread her dumb legs. She leaning forward a little bit, clasping her arms together like this. You know what I'm saying? Leaning forward, just like, all right, mm -hmm. keep talking, Elijah. I'll keep talking. And I'm like, oh, Dr. Pepper. Again. I mean, we, I saw the previews, guys. Okay, I saw the sneak peek from the Kevin Frazier uh, episode thing a few weeks back. But she getting bugged. Okay, keep talking, Elijah. He keep talking. So she's like, all right, I had enough of this. 
<laughs> she get up real quick, start walking, <laughs> start walking out past the cow. Like, all right, I'm with you. You go first though, but I'm with you. I'm, I'm walking right behind you. So they walk out immediately. And everybody's like, oh, snap. Oh, snap. Elijah on look. He's like, man, what, what, what are they doing? Huh? Goes to commercial for dramatic effect. Comes back from commercial for dramatic effect. And I guess she goes straight into wanting to talk to Elijah one. Because they said, we want to discuss with everybody with the one-on-ones we had. Elijah one was just like, fuck. What you won't say? So I guess she's explaining... She's only expressing to him what she's heard from people. But as long as they're moving forward and they're doing better, that's what she's that's what she wanna know. That's all that matters. Really, Dr. Pepper, I thought we was gonna let Elijah Wan know about his trifling self, which you kinda did, but now you pulled back a little bit. You got up, you you leaned forward, and you said Keep talking, Elijah one, and then you got up and acted like you was going to do something, but you didn't do nothing. Dr. Pepper, come on, man. What was he going to do? Because if he ever, if he even tried to get bugged with you, you know everybody going to have your back. You know security going to be quick to grab his ass. Continue not going to do nothing, but you know security going to do something. Even if he were to stand up and act like, Pastor Kyle would have had your back. I'm sure he would have, but you didn't do nothing, Dr. Pepper. I was... I was hoping you would do something, but you do nothing. You made him feel like, okay, that you you lowered yourself and and was trying to explain yourself. Because Elijah one, he looked defensive the whole time. But then on the one on one with Katina, looking there like a like a lost puppy, looking like an abused wife with her sweater, not even saying nothing. And he's saying, what he said, he appreciates Dr. Pepper for explaining herself. What? He's like, I even asked Katina, do I talk down on you? She didn't say nothing. She just smiled. He's like, yeah, that's exactly what she did when I asked her one-on-one. Katina not going to say shit. She's one of those people that's going to be like, you know, yeah, technically you do, but I'm not going to say it because I'm not trying to have you curse me out and yell at me when we get back home. That's what she looked like. And I'm just, let's, I, was, I'm, I pray for her. I pray for her, but... Dr. Pepper, I, we were all rooting for you. Hashtag Tyra Banks. But you didn't do nothing. You you, you pretty much just, just let him have it. And since we... Listen, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do no spoilers. But since one of these uh, <clears throat> doctors is leaving, can we get a black person next time for next season? I know we got Pastor Cal, but... He, Pastor Cal don't know what he doing sometimes. Can we get can we get a black female doctor, therapist, not a sex therapist, therapist, on here, please to to, to let these people know about themselves, please. I know I'm I'm going crazy right now talking all types of mess, but this this, this hurts. This hurts me, my heart because I thought we was gonna let Elijah want to know about himself, and no one made him accountable for his actions. So um. Uh, what do we leave off yet? Oh, okay, a Katina looking like an abused child and wife. And Elijah was talking about he's not in love yet, but his feelings are growing for her. And he's 100% committed to his wife. And I'm like, we do not fucking care. Okay, we don't care. I'm just still upset because Dr. Pepper backed down when she should have told you about yourself. We move on. They talk to Mark about Mark and Lindsay next. Says Mark needs to show more affection. But at the same time, Lindsay, you need to be patient with him. She says she don't want to be patient. Well, damn well, bitch. This nigga's trying to stay by your side. For what reason? Uh, I don't know other than that he's just trying to do this for the TV show. But uh, you, need to, you need to stay beside him. You need to stay beside him because he's the only one who can deal with your crazy ass. Even your daddy and your, and your brother probably was just like, ah, right, you know, I'm going to let you know. She, she crazy, but... You know, that's that's all you do. That's all you. I'm, I'm out of this. Woo! Woo! Got so she got off. She off all back now. But, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and they uh get to Michael and Jasmina talking about the physical touching. And Jasmina says, what she says? They, they physically are touching, but the chemistry and intimacy is not there. She didn't say that word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. Dr. Pepper just lets her, lets her know, like, 
You can say that critique, but not in such a negative way. You can say it's not there yet, not just it's not there. That's where the episode ends, guys. Next week they go on the they finally go on the uh end of the end of the experiment group trip. That's it. I'm just very disappointed Dr. Pepper didn't uh light uh Elijah want a new one. But okay, whatever. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> we will see what happens next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> if you like this review, please like it. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Bye.